When I go after a photograph, an extraordinary vision, there were four steps that I would try and do every time. And the first one of those, based on how the geographic looks at the world, was to focus the vision. And what I'd try and do is celebrate the best in the shot. So when I was, when I was faced with kind of a chaotic vision like this one, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say, what am I falling in love with? What's exciting me? In this case, it's easy. That's my daughter. So I knew what was exciting me. I knew what I was falling in love with. But when I find it, then I try and enhance that, enhance that, and get rid of everything else. Instead of starting, as we so often do, by looking at a situation going, ah, what's wrong with it? What's right with it? Because that connects us with our passion. That emancipates the energy. Michelangelo once wrote, I saw an angel in the stone and carved to set it free. I saw an angel in the stone and carved to set it free. So first I want to focus the vision. And then I have to train my technique. Because vision without technique is blind. I mean, it's great to have a wonderful idea, but that's only half battle. You have to bring it, manifest it into reality to move from imagination to imagine action. So I'd spend hours, days, weeks studying my technique, f-stops and shutter speeds and strobes and tripods, so that when there was a decisive moment, when nature opened a window of opportunity, I wasn't worried about what lens was on my camera. I was there ready to capture it. I call this one midlife rebirth. <laughs> so I try and focus the vision. Then I train my technique, and then I put myself in the place of most potential. The place of most potential. If nature is going to present us with multiple right answers, where do I have the best chance of finding? Them? One time I was taking a taking a shot of Lake Powell, southern in southern Utah, northern Arizona, and I'm flying over what I thought was an absolutely uninhabited, uninhabitable part of the lake. And I look down, and I don't think many of you can see it, but there's a road going along here, a road and a little car. I didn't know anybody even could get out there. And yet seeing it, I knew it was possible. And so I went back to my campsite. I studied the local papers. I figured the day that I wanted to get out there. I rented myself a four-wheel drive. I packed it up with provisions. I bumped all the way out to that, that little overlook. But boy, I was there in the place of most potential when the full moon rode over the lake. And when you're there with your vision and focus and your technique down, God, those right answers just keep coming. Focus the vision. Train your technique. Put yourself in the place of most potential. And then the fourth step seems like the easiest, but it's really the hardest. And that's to truly be open to the possibilities. Possibilities you never dreamed of. I was photographing recently in Marine World. And I'd finished the assignment, which was to photograph the, the orcas and the dolphins. And I'm heading back to the car, and they have these things called dancing fountains in Marine World. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but water comes out of one, goes in a big parabola, into the next one, out of that, into the next one. looks like a big worm going across the, the landscape. And this kid has his hand on the source, you know. <laughs> and he's waiting, and so am I, you know. And he's ready, and so am I. And I know what that next right answer is going to be. And man, I nailed it. But I'm not putting on the brakes, you know. I'm staying open to the next right answer, because if I thought this was it, I never would have seen this one. <laughs> you know? Possibilities we never dreamed of. Staying open to them. When the great photographer, Minor White, would go out to photograph, he wouldn't ever say, what will I take today? Rather, he would ask, what will I be given today? And I would add, will I be open enough to see it? So that just became the way I would shoot. You know, they'd send me to these amazing places like Rose Spit on the top of Graham Island in the Queen Charlotte Islands. And it was on this amazing piece of land that the Haida Indians believed that man was first created when Raven opened a clamshell and let him out. And I was lucky enough to be there one glorious evening with two Haida Indians dancing on the beach. 
And this was one of my first shots. Good shot. You know, I had the, the two participants, one with the drum, one with the paddle. And now I'm saying to myself, what's exciting me? What am I falling in love with? And at that moment, it was just that boy's face. So I grabbed my telephoto and went in. Good right answer. But good as it was, as I'm looking through the lens, I'm saying, wait a minute, wait. You're too close. You've forgotten where you are and who you're shooting for. It's a nice portrait of a child, but it's not a portrait of a Haida. And so even though this was a really good right answer, easily, comfortably, I let it go. Let it go. Pulled the zoom lens back just a little bit, picked up the paddle. Much better shot. In fact, the geographic agreed with me and ran it as the, as the opening spread in the article. And so what I began to see is that, you know, it's not about finding the right answer. It's not even about finding another right answer. What our lives are about are about continuously finding the next right answer.